what we saw for the marketplace early on when people were just realizing they couldn't have face-to-face -face events and had to move to virtual, they were moving to directly to Zooms, GoToMeeting, the WebEx of the world, and data was an afterthought, right? They were just trying to get the events to take place in this new world of online kind of digital environment, virtual environment. And now as they're moving to more mature platforms from virtual, the, 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 the need and, and the ask really should be to make sure we have all of our raw data that we're gonna get that raw data post event from our virtual platform. Let alone if we're able to get some analytics during or, or pre-event, right, to understand what's going on in terms of engagement and our audience and who's converting and things like that. But post-event, we wanna have the raw data back and we wanna have all the engagement and interaction at the individual and company level. So when we're signing a contract or coming to terms with a virtual platform, a virtual event platform, we wanna make sure that they're gonna provide that raw information back to us. And sometimes it might be coming in a CSV file Sometimes it might be, you know, have an integration to our CRM, but whatever it is, we want to make sure we're getting that raw information back, the individual. So we can say, uh, for instance, Eric, and here's how Eric engaged with all the exhibitors and sponsors and other attendees, and here's how many meetings he had. We want to have all that data together in one single kind of file or attached to one ID, if possible so that we can do some analysis so we can understand uh, what actually happened within the platform. I think what's interesting about um, being able to use data now for exhibit sales and sponsorship sales um, is the idea of being transparent with our exhibitors and sponsors. It's a whole new world for them. They're coming to a digital or virtual environment for the first time, likely many of them. And they, their expectations is they really don't know what to expect. What's going to be the ROI? Am I going to see the same level of, of leads and responses that I get from my face-to-face -face event? So we need to be able to show them, you know, here's the, here's the benchmark of how many leads you can expect or interactions. And not just from a uh, aggregate standpoint, like saying, here's the number of clicks or downloads, but truly understanding here's who interacted with you, right? Here's who, here's who came by your booth. Here's who downloaded your sponsorship content or visited the sponsorship, um, you know, activity or, or um, uh, you know, setup that was at the event uh, interaction. And so being able to share that information with them post-event proves to them to justify, here's where your money went. Right? Here's how many people, not just how many, but who actually interacted with you. And then providing some sort of benchmarking or baseline and comparing that, the important piece is to be able to compare that to exhibitors, to sponsors across the event or in their product category. And we can blind out that data, right? So they don't see their competitors' names and they know exactly what their stats are, but to give them some level of understanding of Here's how many leads you got. And here's how it compares to everyone else that was exhibitors and sponsors at the event. So they have an understanding about success. Now, some of those, you know, we might be fearful as an event organizer to share that level of transparent data. But the feedback that we've gotten and we've, you know, heard from our clients is that being able to share that, the expectations are, are met because you're being transparent, you're being open and honest. Here's what you can see. And here's exhib Mr. Exhibitor, Mrs. Sponsor moving forward. Here's what you can expect. Uh, from our virtual events, uh, let alone hybrid or face-to-face -face moving forward. The reason data collection is important when we're not charging to the uh, attend the event is because data really becomes the currency uh, for the event. Because at that point, it's not about just getting people into the event, we might think, well, if I'm not charging, I can just ask first name, last name and email address, and that's fine. Just get them in the door. But someone is underwriting the cost of the event. Likely it's the sponsors or exhibitors. And guess what? They want to know who came. They want to know what they did. They want to know who they are, their demographic information, uh, their business, um, their, their level of uh, kind of business spend, if it's a buyer and seller event. Uh, so being able to collect that level of information becomes the currency for the, uh, for the attendance of the event, for not charging anything. 
So we want to, we don't want to have the mindset of, well, if we're not charging anything, we don't have to collect data. It's really the opposite. If, if we're not charging anything, we should collect more information because that becomes the currency to be able to share that information, be able to understand who came, be able to use that to leverage our relationships with our sponsors and our exhibitors. We know that um, during uh, this time with uh, the pandemic, people are working at home. Uh, they get distracted. They might have best intentions to, to attend an event, a virtual event. Um, but if they don't pay for it, the intentions sometimes go out the window. They have a meeting pops up, something else distracts them. Uh, but when they do pay for it, they have a commitment. They make a commitment, even though if it's a small commitment, whether they pay for it out of their pocket or their company's underwriting it, someone's asking them, hey, you spent $25, $50, whatever to attend this event. How was it? All right. So there's some level of commitment now you have to make to attend. Now, if we're providing um, a, a, a dollar value to the value of event, we want to make sure that the value is there. So if we value the audiences that is going to be there, the access to the network, the access to certain companies that are going to be in our virtual environment, we got to assign a price tag to that because we know there's an opportunity there that they can't get anywhere else. So we don't want to dismiss that and try to say, well, it's, it's free unless it's a service to an industry. That's one thing. But if it's truly a business to business and, and an opportunity for someone to access a market that they wouldn't have otherwise, we want to make sure that we're assigning a dollar value to that to show that truly this is a, an opportunity for them, for their business or for them personally. We've seen the debate as well in terms of uh, folks deciding that they um, don't want to charge for an event or they do want to charge the event. And I think the, the jury's out still a little bit on that. But the idea is, is if it's an event that, again, your audience is going to receive value from and you want them to commit to their time, their energy, their resources, we're going to want to charge something. Even if it's, if we go back to our, our, our work in the face-to-face -face world, even if it's a small dollar value, 15, 20, $25, $50, whatever, let's say the onsite rate was 50. Well, now someone has it in their mind, well, I signed up for the event. I spent 50 bucks. Now I have to go as opposed to not spend anything. They could blow it off. They could say, well, you know, I don't really need to go and I'll sign up for it. But if something comes up, I don't need to show up. But now you have a commitment, a financial commitment uh, for them to actually convert. Because there's one thing for someone to sign up for an event. It's another thing for them to attend an event, right? There needs to be that conversion still needs to take place. So that marketing needs to take place within that time as well to convert them ultimately. But if you give them a financial reason that they've committed, then are more likely to show up. We, we see that all the time in our face-to-face -face work and continue to see it in virtual um, that people, uh, when they feel, even if it's a small amount of money, they're like, I need to come. I need to make sure that, you know, I didn't just throw the money out the window. When we think about uh, attendee engagement and attendee composition and who's, who's coming to the event, we think about what on the platform side, what elements are, are can be engaged with, right? So many platforms have one-on-one -on -one meetings or matchmaking, or they have obviously an expo hall. They have the ability to engage with sponsors or download information or you know catch a catch a live session. So we want to understand what are all those engagement points we have. Can we provide some level of, uh, of scoring? or weighting those engagement points, and then look at our audience and figure out, okay, who was the most engaged, right? Just not just on an individual level, but also on a company level and be able to group those people together. So we wanna understand, okay, here's the group of people that were very engaged in this, these areas. They, were, they did a lot of one-on-ones, they went to the exhibit hall, they engaged with our sponsors. Those people might have a certain demographic makeup. Maybe they're C-level people in the BD realm, right? They're very involved with the transaction. Well, on the other side of the engagement, we might have CEOs that have, you know, our large companies that are, that are coming to our event, but they only are there for predetermined meetings that they set up. So there's a different level of engagement, but that might be a very high level of weight that we have on there. So we have to hit the grammar order audience. We understand the different levels of engagement points that we have. And then we look at the pockets of where the opportunity is, 
And then we can use that for moving forward for content uh, for the virtual uh, or the event organizers, um, as well as moving forward for other virtual events that we'll have in the future. How do we market to them in a different way towards those various levels of engaged people? Uh, we can even tell them, right? Be transparent. We know you were involved in this. We know you were interested in this. Let's, let's personalize our marketing, again, based on the data that we have on the engagement side within the virtual platform. We've never had that level of data and that level of granularity before in the event, in the event world. 